For the next episode of Children of Heroes, we travel to northwest of London to Pina, where we interviewed Mr. Jan George Beck, son of Sergeant Jan Nehoslav Beck. Thank you for participating in our project Children of Heroes. Your father served in the Czechoslovak army in the United Kingdom during the Second World War, but before he worked for Bata in Africa, is that correct? Yes, that's yeah. right. Um, he was one of the uh, young apprentices who uh, were trained up by Barter in Zlin uh, before the war. This is him in his army uniform. This one I think was on a victory parade, but I think it was still with Barter, maybe over here or in, maybe in Czechoslovakia. As part of the Barter philosophy, he sent out people to uh, India, the Far East, but also Africa which is where my father went, along with a few other uh, young Czechs, uh, basically to set up a factory there and develop the, the, the company. He went to Rhodesia, as it was called then, which is now Zimbabwe, um, to a town uh, just outside Salisbury, and um, started the factory there and was working quite happily until, obviously, the war started up. Mm. His journey to the UK was actually pretty unique. <laughs> yes, um, I think it was quite convoluted because I think he first joined the East African Rifles as that was the local army unit that he could. He went to Nairobi first where he was uh, given first basic training uh, and then passed on to Palestine, I think where they regrouped a lot of the soldiers to then transport them by ship around South Africa and eventually to Liverpool which I think must have a taken quite a few months to organize and b being quite a perilous journey you know with all the u-boats in the Atlantic but um, yes he landed in uh, in England and um, he joined the, the a Czech regiment tank regiment but which was really part of the British army and as I understand it they were based not far from Leamington Spa uh, which I think is still a, a quite strong Czech uh, area. And then it was really the, the training in, in the English countryside, in the tanks, really in preparation for D-Day. I think he went uh, into Europe a few days after the actual D-Day, but then I think the Czech regiment was given a quite substantial role in bottling up the Germans around the Dunkirk area. So it was... Uh, a lot of fighting. I remember my dad saying that, uh, well, he, he didn't speak about it very much. It was actually more of his friends who mentioned uh, various incidents, one of which was where my dad's friend was in another tank which had been hit by enemy fire and uh, the friend was just feeling very uh, concussed or not able to get out of the tank. And my dad jumped out to basically pull him out of the tank and save him from uh, being caught up in the in the fire so uh, yeah it was pretty tough I think and um, I don't know how much more they were able to go in towards Central Europe which obviously would have been a, a great achievement for them to liberate their own country but certainly they did a lot going into Europe and France at that time. I don't really know a lot about them but they are sort of campaign medals that uh, I found in an old shoe box along with all the other photographs. But it's interesting, there's one which is of the African star, I think from his early days when he was there. Some of them, well these are Czech, but then some are from Britain, from England. So I think this one and this one as well. No, that would have Czech colours there. It's good they were campaign medals um, and show that he did contribute to the war effort, I think probably more than what I realise, 
after the war he returned to Africa to work yeah. for Batya. Yes, that's right, which I think was fortunate for him, but he went back to Rhodesia. Um, he was also then in Kenya for a while. He got married, uh, a Czech girl who uh, was a friend of Czech man in, in Rhodesia. Started a family, so uh, had my two elder sisters. But unfortunately, uh, coming back from a, a holiday in the seaside, they, they were involved in a car accident. And um, my father's first wife was killed in that accident. So he was left with uh, two young girls of about nine and ten uh, growing up. Thanks to the Czech community, I think, the word got out that uh, there was a man who was uh, looking for uh, perhaps somebody else to, to get married to. Um, he returned to, to the UK? He, he was still in Africa, but the word went out. He came back to the UK, I think, just on a business visit, um, because my mother, who had come out of Czechoslovakia in, I think, 46, 47, and was working in, again, for barter, um, in East Tilbury, at uh, the factory there. Uh, and they met, and a bit of a whirlwind romance, I think, because she then went out to Rhodesia to get married and um, look after as well, or become a mother to my two sisters. And uh, not long after I was born, so I was uh, part of that. I was only four months old when my father was then seconded back to, to London, with, still with Barter. So we lived in England for four years, but then again he was um, sent out to India this time. So as a whole family, we went out by boat to Barter, India. So then again it was his career in the, in the factory, uh, getting up to the stage of being factory manager. There were other Czechs there as well, so there was quite a good strong uh, Czech community there. But um, he could only get leave to come back to England. We had a home here in uh, Kenton, not far away. And um, so he could only get leave every two years. Um, and I think he um, found the, the life out there. Although we had the, the golf club and the swimming club, the heat, especially uh, in the summer and the monsoon rains, made it you know, quite a hard, hard life, really. But... Um, Yes, I remember that the, um, the Czech community was still there and um, there were barbecues from time to time and uh, good, good Czech uh, sausages and stuff like that, so... Uh, what was your childhood like there? Um, it, interesting, it, um, because at first I went to a, a local Indian school, um, although it was done in English. And so when I came to boarding school in England, I had no concept of things like snow or uh, that, they, that it got dark at four o'clock in the afternoon in winter. I think I was the, the only um, boy at the boarding school whose parents lived in India. There were quite a few whose parents lived in Africa because uh, that seemed to be a much bigger expat British community, either the army or uh, diplomats from there. I think I always felt a little bit, um, that's maybe unique is the word to say, uh, of, of this uh, background of, of living in India. After retiring from Batya, he joined uh, UNIDO. How, how did he like uh, working for the United Nations? I think very much, because it gave him the chance of using a lot of his experience in the footwear industry to, to go back to... Um, so sort of kind of developing or emerging countries. So often they would be c companies or countries that had barter in there originally, but had either been taken over um, by the local people, but perhaps hadn't had the investment and the management input. So that was what he could uh, contribute to the company. So there's a series of sort of short missions, um, Poland, he went to Tanzania, so back to Africa again, um, and eventually back to Calcutta, uh, not Calcutta, to Kanpur in, in India. Um, I think it was the variety they enjoyed, that, and also this contribution of his experience mm. back to uh, the, 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 the various countries he went to. 
It was only in 1981 when uh, we kind of went back and I w accompanied them to Czechoslovakia to go and see his, where he had been brought up in Jasena. You know, my father passed away in 1982, unfortunately, not long after we'd visited Czechoslovakia. And he, he never really was able to go back there as much as he could, you know, because he passed away. You later decided to work in uh, the IT sector. What yes. What led you to this choice? Um, well, it was really that um, a lot of my friends at the time were getting into the IT industry. I, in fact, um, studied metallurgy at Sheffield Polytechnic um, and worked for a few years in the industry. But uh, it was the early 80s and engineering or light engineering wasn't really a boom industry, whereas IT certainly was. So I cross-trained, uh, learnt some COBOL language and trained as a, a or got a job as a programmer, computer programmer, um, and never really looked back. It, I steadily went up the ranks as um, analyst programmer and team leader. Um, and then I joined uh, another a petrochemical company, which was had French head office, um, where I became the IT manager. Uh, for the UK subsidiary, but uh, got sent out to p work in Paris for three years, which uh, I really enjoyed. And I felt it was a bit like uh, how my father had um, been sent off and out to different countries as part of his career. So I was, in a way, replicating that in uh, some degree. Um, and then came back to the UK um, and then took early retirement and uh, have been enjoying it ever since, really. <laughs> How has your Czech heritage affected your life? Um, well, it's been something constant throughout my life. I think my father was very... He, he was Czech through and through, that, that was clear. Um, whereas my mother, um, she had come over to England she had learned English when she was still in Czech Republic. And for her, England was the, the country sh she wanted to make home. She wanted me brought up speaking English uh, rather than Czech, which in hindsight, I wish I had learned Czech or that she had taught me. Um, but between my parents, they always spoke in Czech. Um, and my sisters uh, also had spoken Czech at home as they were growing up. But it, as I say, it's been a constant um, theme throughout my life because when my father did come back uh, to the UK, uh, it would be going to the uh, Velechard in, at that time, West End Lane for Czech lunch on Sundays with all the ch good Czech cooking. Some of the, the, some of the children that were more my age, again, were of the Czech descendants, uh, were, were my friends as well. I've still keep in touch with one of them. So it, ha it has been a sort of a, a thread, as I say, throughout my life. Um, and also having the name of Jan, like my father, that was very strange to people as well. And uh, nowadays it's, it's just not, as, not a problem. Everyone has an uh, interesting name, shall we say. So, but I still have to explain where the name comes from. Often people think it's Dutch or Norwegian or something, but um, so I'm quite proud to be of Czech descent, I must say.